Big we chat. are live. Live, live? Live. Oh, yeah. Ashy well, what's the boys. Oh. Hmm? One at a time, fellas. One at a time. I know we're all excited. This is Brian's show. Got a little bittersweet excitement for me, man. Uh, Fedor, retiring. It's like, uh, it's definitely an end of an era. Hold on one second, one second. And we're back. Yo, yo. Welcome, everybody. We're back. We're back. Hello and welcome to the Ashy Knuckles podcast. So, yeah, Fedor retired over the weekend. He lost to Bader again. It sucks to see somebody that was widely regarded at one point the best heavyweight ever. Some people still have him in arguments that he is the best heavyweight ever. Me? Hey. I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I can't say it. I think he was the greatest of his era, but not of all time. Well, like 2003, four to what? 10? Give or yeah, take. Yeah, the early 2000s, that, the, that first decade of the 2000s, the Pride and Strike Force era. Yeah. You know. With M1 mixed in there, of course. He killed all the former UFC champions, though, when he did fight him. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, he proved that anytime a champion got out of their contracts, which back then was kind of the wild, wild west of contracts, uh, that when he matched up with them, he matched up with them well. Killed them. He, he was dominant, actually. Especially Frank Mir, who was also regarded at the time as one of the better... Champions. He slept the uh, Arvlaski. I think he choked mm-hmm. out uh Tim Sylvia, right? Correct. Yeah, he didn't fight Randy Cortez. Mm-hmm. I mean Couture. <laughs> For the audio listeners. He he kind of got uh gypped out of that one, Couture did. I'm trying to think who else? Who else did uh Fedor had a good run, especially in uh, Pride. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, think about it. Fedor started his career in, like, 2000. Mm-hmm. And he had, he had a fight this year. So, we're talking about a 23-year career. Or a heavyweight. That's unheard of. Um, and he fought most of his career, if not all of it, really, if you think about it, at the highest level. Like, he, he, he never was um, a gatekeeper or... A guy who was just, you know, you know how sometimes vets get that young and up and coming fighter that they kind of like, you know, pass the, pass the keys to, like, you know, they get this, don't have a guy on a two or three fight win streak, young guy, and then they fight like an aging vet, like a cowboy, and then that's like their right to pass it to the division, like you beat him and now you're legit because you beat a legit name. Yep. He's never been that. Fedor is always in the top three of any organization he's ever been in. He's always either competing for the title or a few fights out from a title. Absolutely. And one of the things I like to ding a lot of fighters on is hiding from the big fights, hiding from the big names, and that's something that Fedor just never did. He would come into any promotion and be like, who's your biggest and baddest? I'll take him on, sure. Saying no wasn't an option and for he, him. He was fighting when they were all on the stuff. Yes. What do you mean by when? Before Usada. Hmm. Pre Usada. Well, he was. He was in Japan. Hold up. There's no Usada there. Uh, Japan, you know, encouraged it. <laughs> yeah, we. Well, you, you're a superhero. You fight here. Be. You're a superhero. You fight here. <laughs> Hey, best moment for uh, Fedor with me was when he survived the flying suplex super move from Kevin Randleman. I don't know how, how, how. If anybody looks back on that, this man left the ground 
with another man's whole upper half of his body going towards the ground. I don't know how he survived it. And then put him in a Kimura, I believe. How? Yes. How? That's the amazing part. How? He came back from that and won by submission. Immediately after that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if you look at Fedor, um, he's not, he, physically looking at him, he's not like the most intimidating looking guy. I mean, for a heavyweight, he's six feet tall. He fought most of his career at about 235 pounds. So he's not like this scary action figure of a heavyweight that we see in in Ganu or Brock Lesnar or or Uberim. But his presence in the cage, that stoic, quiet, killer confidence was like the aura of what we saw in that era, the the early 2000s era of Fedor, where he would get slammed on his neck by Kevin Randleman and feel no emotion, grab his arm and just take it to take it home. What, uh, what they call them? The the cyborg or something? The Terminator or something like that? What they call Last them? Emperor. Termin- Last Emperor, but yeah, they called him the Terminator at the time because there was no stopping him. He just kept coming. Sure. And, and I just want to give a shout out to Fedor because I mean like it's a it's always this debate about who's the best heavyweight and the instant answer for most people, myself included, would be Stipe because of the body of work. Like, it's, just, it's really difficult to, to defend the title. Um, and I give a lot of credit to guys who can hold on to the top spot. Once you get to the top of the mountain, you're getting everybody's best. You're fighting all five round fights. You're getting the best of the best, um, unless your name is, like, Connor. You might not. But most of the time, when you're the champion, you're getting the best possible match. Best possible um, guy in the division. Every fight you continue to um, cha- um, you know defend, and Stipe was able to defend the heavyweight more than anybody in UFC history. Uh, what, what was that? Three three title defenses. Um, three title defenses. Which is it's, it's obviously impressive. He was able to recapture the heavyweight division after losing it, which is even more impressive to me. I didn't then the defenses because uh, as we see, like guys get knocked off and. They don't make it back. Like they don't end up winning the title, defending it a couple times, lose it, and then they're never champion again. Whereas Fedor, I mean not Fedor, excuse me, respect to Fedor. Um, whereas Stipe was able to lose the belt, lose the belt, come back and take the belt in impressive fashion too. Like he um, settled that score with DC and was able to get his title back um, before he ran to the buzzsaw that was Francis Ngannou. So I wanted to give. Fedor credit because in my in my eyes, I would say if you don't say Stipe is the best heavyweight of all time, then that's the next guy because he did it for the longest. He was always at the top of the the sport, and the only thing he doesn't have in his resume, as far as greatness is concerned, is the UFC heavyweight title. That just was never meant to be is the UFC title. All politics on that one. Literally. All politics on that one. But, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, Fedor is either the next one in line or number three. He's still in the top three. You can't denounce C-level Kane either. But, you know, it's it's a tough fight. Like, that was the argument for the longest time was between C-level Kane and Fedor. And you know what? That that's still a tough one for me to choose one or the other over him. But yeah, I agree. Stipe has to be the best on the data sheets. You know what? <clears throat> and that's I was that's why I, like I I made sure I mentioned why I gave Stipe credit for being the, the goat, and it's literally because of the title defenses and how hard it is to maintain that title. The guy you just mentioned, in Velasquez, like we knew during his reign, he was like. Uh, he's probably the most talented heavyweight that we had seen to that point. A guy who can go five rounds with the same energy, the same intensity at heavyweight. That was just unprecedented for the time. And Kane was definitely one of the most scary fighters, in my opinion, at heavyweight. He could just do it all. He had every skill. He 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 can stand up with you, one of the best wrestlers in the division, if not the best. 
cardio for days, knockout power, just everything. Um, so if I'm going to say, if I'm making a Mount Rushmore heavyweights, I can't imagine one that doesn't have Cain Velasquez's head on that at least. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you. I'm just thinking when it comes to Fedor, the only thing I can really say that I can hear any criticism about his career is that he didn't fight for the UFC. And what, not, not of his fault. I mean, he, 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 it was a, they tried to get a deal done with the UFC back when um, all the transactions were happening when the, some of the, the Eastern organizations folded. But for whatever reason, that never came to play. Mark says politics. I say numbers. Same deal. It's all the same mm-hmm. shit. So I, I just really wanted to give him his flowers as far as his impact on the sport of mixed martial arts and especially his personal impact on um, me because like watching him, I watched most of his career and I would say dude was always impressive. Always showed up, like you said, never ducked any notable name. He's fought the who's who of heavyweights. Any Anybody who was anybody in, that, in mixed martial arts had to face Fedor unless you were under the UFC shield and you couldn't. Like guys like Randy Couture, guys like Brock Lesnar, etc. Um, mm-hmm. Let's let's take a look forward because um, we got a, something, a few days coming up this weekend. We have another Russian who's looking to make. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We got to We got to We got to say something about this other Russian dude that just beat Derek Lewis. Ah, oh Sergey, Sir, is it Sergey Spivak? We don't even gotta talk much about it. It was expected, and it was done. Probably not how we was hoping, but it was done. This guy's gonna be a problem at heavyweight. Oh yeah, he had his his grappling is relentless. It, it was I I think he took Derek down like six times in a span of a minute. God, I didn't Derek, even see Derek, the fight. I just got a notification. It was like, damn. So, you know when Brock Lesnar takes people to Suplex City? No. He, and he just slams them over and over. That was basically what happened. Like, Derek would do the Derek Lewis get up where he would not just, just power his way up. Yeah. Like, put his right hand under the armpit, stand up. He did that, like, three times. The fourth time, he took a three-point stance to get up. He had to like you like get on one leg first, lean and then get up again and then got ticked. he just repeatedly slammed back to the mat. And I was like, this dude Sergey is um he's not even getting tired. He's throwing around a two a, a damn near three hundred pound Derek Lewis like a like he's a featherweight and he's not a, he's, he's not any worse for wear. And for the longest time it was like a, a general consensus that the best grappler and heavyweight division was Curtis Blades. That's pretty much um, the consensus, especially in my mind, I would, I would say. But Ooh. You have a challenge for that now because that Sergey looks incredible. Does Blades have that a group. matchup yet? I don't think so. Let's find out. No, he does not. So his grappling look A-OK? A-1. A-1. Okay. Like, if... if, if, if um. If I were lazy and I didn't want to just, you know, give him his own flowers, imagine like a heavyweight could be. <laughs> oh, whoa! For real? Just for uh, yeah, just to give you a visual of what it will look, what it looks like. He's a, a mauling style. He's all over you. Like no, he never. It's not like he's, um, he's gonna shoot for a takedown and let that get stuffed and then like okay, I'm gonna reset and then try it again. No, he's like. Chain, chain. If chains. that doesn't work, I'm going for the trip. Chains. That doesn't All work. Chains. Yeah, man. Okay. I was like, is it and for a heavyweight? Chain wrestling. That's use beautiful. that kind of for real. And for a heavyweight to use that kind of energy is impressive that he has that ability. It's like that's yeah. taxing. No, that's actually quite impressive, actually, because heavyweight that's almost unheard of. Mm-hmm. Period. I think the last person that had chain wrestling since in the UFC was probably actually Kane. Like good cardio and chain wrestling, heavyweights. I can't think of anyone. Cormier. Huh? Oh yeah, Cormier. I forgot. He... I forget that he had a heavyweight run. Who did he use his, his chain wrestling on? Just what did he even do? Josh that? Barnett. 
Josh Barnett was the most notable. No, heavyweight wise, he took down Derek Lewis with the greatest of ease, right? Oh yeah. <clears throat> what a hurt. It's always been Derek's Derek's kryptonite. If you don't, get, if he doesn't have a guy that's willing to stand and just bang with him, he's in for um, a struggle. Even um, in mm-hmm. in his early in his career, grappling has always kind of been one of his uh, one of the little chinks in his armor. All right, so we'll leave this one with one last note, since we're just cruising over it. Is Derek Lewis done, or is he gatekeeper? Um, I would say, as a contender is concerned, it's it, the heavyweight's too shallow to ever count anybody out. Is it, it? It only takes three wins. Shit. You get three, you get three, you get three wins in a row, and Two. you create some buzz. Two, see, two, three is overkill. Yeah. Three is tight. So Derek loses. If he if, if he's done, I mean, is it, only way I think he's done is if he decides to hang him up. Um, however, he's been on a it's been a rough skid for him. Yeah, I think he's on. It's like three three losses in a row. Three, been maybe finished four. Like, he's been uh, finished him at least. Yeah, I think he's one and four in his last five. I, I, if I, if I, I'm only going off memory, but I believe he's been finished in like at least three of those last Gone. matches. Uh, yep. Two of Vasa, spit yes. back. Correct. I don't know. And Plahovich. What? Plahovich has never finished Derek Lewis. Hmm? Jan Plahovich finished Derek Lewis? No, not that guy. Pavlich. Whatever I don't remember his name. Oh yeah, yeah. White yeah, yeah. heavyweight. Yeah, yeah. He he's, knocked him I think, out I think too. He's, I think he's Russian too. He's a another one to look out for as well. That dude is that dude is built like a fucking Mack truck. He's huge, chiseled, powerful heavyweight. He looks to build like where his Fedor doesn't look like the scary definition of what a heavyweight looks like. Oh yeah. Okay. God, dude. Yeah. Okay. He beat Dawkins. Okay. He beat Dawkins. Mm-hmm. He beat Curtis Blade. It, you know what's so crazy about Derek Lewis? He got dubs over good people, but he got some L's against some good people too. Yeah, so I think that's a that's a good mark for the division. That's that's that's, that's a that's a check mark for the heavyweight division. I think the heavyweight right now is an. Inv- an influx of talent that makes it as deep as it's ever been. As he's staying right now, even though Stipe is kind of like, you know, a part-timer at this point, he's still on the roster. Um, Daniel mm-hmm. Cormier is retired. But you have the the return of John Jones. You have Curtis Blades, Sergey Spivak on the rise. Uh, is it Palovich? The The... The guy we just mentioned. Sergey. Um, just call him Sergey. The Sergey twins, then. Because um, there's a, a Spivax also, Sergey, I, I believe. And then we have um, the the uh, the English guy, the English jet, um, what's coming from back from Italy. Oh, Aspinall. I'm Aspinall. Aspinall. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's an athletic freak at heavyweight. A lot of reason to be excited if you're a fan of the big boys, so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that it's a good thing to have all this uh, talent right now. Actually, it's let's really be good, honest. Though. Let's be honest, though. Derek Lewis, there's no matchup period that you won't even at least give him a puncher's chance in, and always be on edge to see if that's going to happen or not. I, I so. think that's his. That's his. That's his biggest. That's the, the biggest plus for Derek is he's always a draw. So even if it's like a, a you need somebody to fill up a a main card and you want a marquee name, you can match him up against anybody in, in the heavyweight division and that's gonna turn, it's gonna bring eyes to the, the ticket. Yeah. I don't think so to answer the question, I don't think so that he's that he's done or that he's some kind of gatekeeper. I think that division is just so loaded that um you get a few wins, it's gonna be over somebody notable. It's gonna be over somebody that has a buzz and you're right back in the title picture, if not fighting for a title. Um and then we, we didn't even mention Cyril Gunn. Yeah, we didn't even mention him. I mean, right after that, because I think it's it is John Jones versus Cyril, right? 
What's next? So that's, that's next. Literally, Derek Lewis could go against the loser of that and be right back into it, which I doubt that's going to happen. But right, and then you you add Curtis Blaze to the mix, and Stipe says he wants the winner of uh, Jones versus uh, Gone. So mm-hmm. the, the the heavyweight the heavyweight landscape right now, like I, I just think it's there's a good infusion of young talent and still aging vets, where it's always in, it's interesting. And anyone can be champion. That's why it's so impressive to have someone defend it more than twice. Because everybody's so good. And at heavyweight, it, it just that's the one division where truly one punch can change history. So, mm. Speaking of punches changing history, what happens if Volkanovski knocks... Makashev out. Is he not a goat? It's right now he's he, your pound. Right now he's the consensus pound for pound king. He is pound for pound. Yes. Let's say he goes in there, not. I mean, it just it is like somehow last uh, Islam on the chin and new. It can happen. What do we? What? Do, what's the narrative now for uh, Islam? Not for Islam. We know what the narrative will be for Islam. What would it be for Volkanovski? Is he now the GOAT? Is he now placed in that same atmosphere as GSP and Jones and Body Mouse? Are we talking about him as being one of the best mixed martial arts of all time? I think he's already there. I th- Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I, I think he's right on the cusp of that now, but when he becomes a double champ in a, in a weight class higher, you can't really argue that. Like, he has to be in that conversation. Hold on. And Hold on, Mark. Hold on. Before we get there, is it odd to you guys that this fight right here... You guys heard that? The boat? Yeah. All right. Listen. Is it odd to you guys that this fight right here... This has never been done. Number one and what's Islam? Oh, let me check. Let me check. He's got to be in the pound for pound something. Something. At least the top four. Maybe. He's yeah. number two. There you Dumb. go. Like, before Dumb when uh, Volk fought Max the last time, they were both in pound for pound, right? Okay. That's mm-hmm. that's cool. But this shit right here, it's number one and number two. This is different. This, this is... Totally different. And the advertising and the marketing is just horrendous. Like, I haven't seen much stuff of this. Like, usually I'll catch some YouTube ads here and there. I'll catch a commercial on something. You know what I'm saying? On something. I haven't seen much of anything about this. And it's kind of weird to me because, like, this fight right here is almost once in a lifetime. You don't have this. You know why, though, right? Why? Why focus all your money on advertising a fight that doesn't need advertisement. Man. Well, that's what I was going to say that too. That, that I don't, this fight sells itself. There's, 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 there's no... The no, casuals just, don't do know heavy. nothing though. And what now? The casuals don't know nothing. You know, all they need to know is that Islam is DC's boy and he sounds like somebody that would hang out with Habib. That's all he needs to know. And the way that he talks... And the way that he gets compared to everyone else, uh, that's all they need to know. And they know this is one of the best there ever was. Australia is 100% behind uh, Volkanovski, and so is New Zealand. So they got two of the biggest fight countries ever backing him. And then they got all of Russia. Well, all the uh, Muslims, too. <laughs> and all the Muslims. So... And if you might, if you happen to be involved in the edge, in the Islamic religion, his name is Islam, and you might just be like, all right, cool, that guy rocks with the same God that I love. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was a joke, but it's a true joke. Um, We're going to get canceled before we get started. Here's, here's another reason why I think that that fight sells hard to the casuals. It's a champ, it's an opportunity for someone to become champ champ. And when, whenever that happens, 
anybody, if you just, if you don't know anything about the sport, you just look at the top and go, okay, who is the champion? But okay, that guy's a champion, and he's fighting another guy that's also the champion. That creates its own buzz. Even though you, you to, guys are saying this, it's just odd to me that they're not promoting it more. Well, let's put it, th- I'll put it this way to you. Who's one of the biggest names and commentators in sports period right now? In the UFC, at least. Oh, uh, Mr. Cormier. Correct. And who is the one person that he fucking name drops every time he opens his mouth? You right. You right. So, you right. who's been promoting the shit out of this? <laughs> you right. Yeah. I don't what? think there's a lack. I, I, I feel like this, even though it's it not just don't seem as like, much. Right. Because I think some of the, like, like he said, I, don't, I think this fight doesn't need that energy. The same way as you don't need to go crazy on marketing Amanda Nunez fighting Ronda Rousey and market all this about Amanda and make her this big deal when the ones who know, they know what she is. The ones who already understand what's going on, they, they know what she is. They, they need to more pro- promote like Ronda Rousey and let people know that this this is the, the, the fight and make the promotion all about her and you know, the results are going to be the results once the cage closes. So I don't think you're going to get any extra ticket sales doing a heavy promotion of this event, given that it's already a, a like you said, it's a historic type of event. It's a, a a chance for someone to, for Max, not for Max, excuse me, for Volkanovski to capture champ champ status, moving up from featherweight to lightweight and taking a lightweight belt from right now. Islam looks like a generational talent. I mean, he has everything that Habib had with the grappling with, I, would, I mean, I think it's kind of hard to argue that his striking looks way better. Ten times better. Than Habib's. It looks way better. So, like, if he if he already has these, you know he's not deficient at all when it comes to grappling. grappling. In fact, he might be have an edge over most opponents in like in, in um, the 155 division. He can also stand and bang. So, he, it's, it's not like a, a one-trick boring thing. Whereas Habib, you know you're going to get dominated in grappling and grappling and get mauled. So the, the fight approach for most um, contenders is different. They're just trying to avoid getting taken down, whereas you can't really avoid anything with Islam. And if you can, if Volkanovski can go up there and beat a guy at a higher weight class, not just a guy, not just the champ, but a guy who seems to have a stranglehold over the division, even though he hasn't run the gauntlet. If you just look at the matchups... I think he um, he beats he can beat Gaethje and he I mean uh, Islam I think he beats Gaethje, Poirier, um, Chandler, Connor. Well, I don't see a one hundred and fifty five pound matchup that I can confidently say they take that belt from Islam. I got one last thing about the uh, promotion of this fight because I, I see where we're going forward with it. I know why it's probably not getting promoted as much. And it's because I've been tuning in somewhat to this show. The uh, Power Slap show. They're promoting that a lot more than the actual pound for pound number one fight. That's what it is. Because even when I'm watching that, I don't see no commercials for this pay-per-view at all. And that's their stuff, right? Am I right? Dana stuff, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So are you saying that the UFC is just playing with their new shiny toy right now? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure the UFC has anything to do with it, though. It's because not if the you UFC, look at any Dana of the White. branding, it's all Dana White. It's Dana branding. White, and he's trying to use the same formula as the old tough. They might be using the, some of the same houses. I don't know. Well, I'm hey, sure they're using the same rental company. When you so. say Dana White, what does that mean? Exactly. That auto- yeah, when you say Dana White is the UFC. Yeah, but anytime he was like trying to do like uh, when Dana was trying to do his own boxing thing, or when he was trying to do a grappling thing for a short period of time, it was always Zufa boxing, Zufa grappling, Zufa whatever. This one is Dana White. Well, you can't say <laughs> you can't say Hershey without thinking chocolate. You can't say I'm, UFC. You can't say Dana White without thinking UFC. That's all I was just agree. trying to say. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I haven't watched a whole lot of that Power Slap stuff. But. I mean, the Power Slap 
you can't competition watch it. is filmed in the apex. You can't watch so, it. So there you go. It's, there you go. After so many times of somebody just getting slapped defenseless, it makes you wonder, like, is this a sport? I'm there for the entertainment though. If some dude's willing to get paid two and two for it, then by all means, do what you gotta do, bro. We need to start promoting car jujitsu. Oh, uh, that's what we need to start promoting. Okay, okay. Before we before we take a detour, let's get back on track on this pound for pound fight. Probably, hopefully, this is one of the greatest pound for pound fights we ever have. Because I really don't see a number one and number two pound for pound ever fighting again for a long time. Normally their weight classes are so far apart that you can't see it happening. Yeah, because for the longest pound for pound was what, 205 and 125, right? For the men's? Uh, yeah, 205 and 125. And then once Demetrius left, it was 205 and 145. So... Yeah. Because literally, like, yes. both these guys... Okay, check this out. Islam Makachev. He was nowhere near a pound-for-pound pound shot, right? Previously. Am I right? Depending on who you talk to, but yeah. Pretty much. Before he fought for a title. Am I right? Correct. I'm still curious how he jumped up to number two, given he beat Charles the way he did. But... Does that warrant him jumping up that high? Because they still got Leon as three and Kamaru number four. And Izzy's number five, even though he lost to Pereira, who's number six now. This is kind of weird to me, like these rankings. So, it, it was kind of a... Uh, they spoke into a fruition because Charles was in the top three. Pound for pounds at the time. And then he just got beat in dominant, devastating fashion by Islam. So you've got to give him the credit there. I don't know if that really warrants number two. But he's definitely top five pound for pound at that point. I know that I want to I wanna pick apart his, his credentials so badly. Because his... Uh, his record in the UFC isn't exactly against the top of the line, but I do give him credit for beating Charles Oliveira with a submission of all things. Anthony Pettis subbed uh, Oliveira as well. That's that was a different Oliveira. That was a different Oliveira. Hey, he had blonde hair then too. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he did. But I could be wrong. <laughs> but with Islam's whole reign, I mean, yeah, he fought the Tiago Moseses and Bobby Greens and who else? Dan Hooker. Dober, was, right? Uh, he fought Dober too, right? Yes, he, he fought Dober. Dober's no slouch. We'll give him that one. Dober's, Dober's no slouch, but a win over Dober just means that you're a good top 15 contender but it's just like he did what he was supposed to do every time he wasn't supposed to have yes. no close fight it was supposed to be like smash 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 mm -hmm. smash you get what i'm saying and then he did all that and now he's the champion right he did what he needed to do i wasn't arguing that it's just his if i'm going to argue about conor mcgregor's you know, rise to fame. I got to argue about his record going up there. Uh, a win over Bobby Green, as much as I love Bobby Green myself, doesn't warrant a title shot by itself. Well, no, he was supposed to fight uh, Dariush. Mm -hmm. But then. A so Dariush fight, I would have 100% been like, hey, title shot. I mean, he got hurt, and man's not hurt, so mm -hmm. he's got to fight somebody. And, you know, Oliveira, he smoked the whole division before mm -hmm. he got to him. So, it only made sense. Is he a Dariush or Islam? And Islam was healthy. And Dariush is getting slighted again. Don't he got a fight coming up? 
Uh, I think he's arguing for one. I don't know if they actually gave him one. I thought he was fighting Poirier next. Or is that just hearsay? Let's find out. I think it's hearsay. Because you got uh, Chandler and Connor doing the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have a fight on schedule yet. Alright, so let's go the variable routes. Like, what if this guy wins? What if this guy wins? If. We'll go with the easier one. If Islam wins, who's next for him? Islam wins, who's next for him? Because mm-hmm. obviously he's still going to be the lightweight champion. So who will his second title defense be against? Let's check out the lightweight standings currently. I mean, the obvious one would be either Dustin if they don't have a fight coming up or Darius. Like, Darius 100% deserves a title shot. I, I really feel Darius is fighting uh, Poirier next. And, and the winner of that should get it. And Gaethje's already got a uh, fight booked against uh, Fazia. Fiz- 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 Zion? Fuck, man. Mm-hmm. I can't say names out here. Raphael. Fiziev's. Fiziev. Fiz- Fizzy. <laughs> Fizzy. Fizzle, dizzle. Oh, my boy, though, Saryukin. He on the come up. Watch mm-hmm. him. Watch him. Arman. But... Even with uh Charles, man, Charles, he's still out there. Like, you could give uh Darius to Charles, cause I think Poirier. I really don't think he wants to fight for a title. I think he just wants the money fights. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Right now, what's a money fight over the title? Right now, though. I mean, I'm pretty sure he got paid handsomely nice for that Chandler fight, and you know. Literally, the top five dudes, top six, no, even, shit, the top ten dudes, they're all going to bring some something. Top 11, shit. What a lightweight division in general. And also, the whole, Connor Moicano, Mike. Moicano wants money. Get that man and some yeah. money. And, and you know, Connor, Connor, you're right, you're right. So. Connor yeah, got a date, though. got to film the Ultimate Fighter, and then they got to fight. And Man. then there's something. So there's going to be one fight between. Let's not get into that yeah. whole six month USADA. Let me get clean. He's back in the conversations. With him, let me he, stop in, pissing for, hot. For the, future, for the future of lightweight, he's back in the conversation. Oh, yeah. he got. I, I agree. It's February now. He, he could fight in December. And beyond. Um, he could fight in like. Uh, what six months? Was that? August, September. For uh, He could fight Chandler then. If he knocks him out quick, he could turn around and fight in December against uh, whoever has the title, give or take. Yeah, but you don't think that the title holder might defend it one more time before then? Well, they That's what I'm saying. February. I don't think Connor's in the next I see conversation. This, I think I see he's in the one after that. For the lightweight belt, depending on who wins, I see it goes something along the lines yeah. of... Uh, I, gotta I gotta bounce, guys. Um, but... We're having y'all back. We're having y'all back and having this thing going. All right, B. Hey, one thing I want to say before I go, I didn't mean to, you know, jump in. But um, I like what Masvidal is doing with this new little uh, boxing club. I love the matchups that are on this next this, this next ticket. This is Masvidal 4 or whatever. Uh, looking really – I'm looking forward to seeing Jose Aldo, Jeremy Stevens box. 100%. Mm-hmm. And I think Anthony Pettis is – Roy Jones or something like that. So Roy Jones Jr. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be dope. Um, he's my brothers. I can subscribe. To everybody who hasn't, holler at your boy. All right, B. See you later, man. B Woods cutting out. All right. So where were we? We were talking about the potential lightweight matchups. This is how I see it going. Whoever wins the uh, the fight Saturday goes on to the. Uh, oh, okay. Let me take that all back. Islam, if he wins Saturday, he goes on to fight possibly, depending on how much damage he takes, he goes on to fight uh, International Fight Week, for example, July, August, right? And after that, he should have 
an open schedule for the end of the year, possibly January. And depending on how Chandler and McGregor does, it's setting up for itself. We called um, this before. To be uh, culturally ignorant real quick, when is that... Um, what is it the Russians do? Ramadan? The Muslims do. Ramadan, yeah. When is Ramadan? It's, uh, it's not the Russians, it's the Muslims. That's why I said the Muslims. I was like the Russian. I mean the Muslims. <laughs> it's, uh, I think this year it's in April. It's April or May. I have a few Muslim around? friends. Yeah, it's, it, it, it changes every year. It depends okay. on when it is. But these dudes, some of these guys, like my Muslim friends, they, they are true warriors in itself. Doing the jobs they do. Fasting all day long. No water, no nothing. While the sun is up, I give them a lot of credit for doing okay, what I they do. I just did. had to ask that question to like aim for when he's going to be inactive for that too. It's usually around the Easter season. Okay. So that's why he's fighting now. Mm-hmm. Ramadan goes. And then, like I said, July, August, whenever International Fight Week. Because you know they've been changing it on us since COVID. Mm-hmm. Usually it was like 4th of July weekend, somewhere around there. And I imagine he'll have a fight there if Islam wins. And then if he wins again, he'll have probably the winner of Chandler and Connor in December, end of year card, or early January maybe. That's how I see it. Yeah. That could happen. I wish it wouldn't happen, but it could happen. I That would be the biggest fight to go for, because those are the two biggest names that are probably available for that title fight, And the if fight, that happens. The fight that I'm assuming he would get on uh, International Fight Week or the card after that would be the winner of Gaethje and Rafael Fiziev, Fiziev, Fizzy. However you say his name. That boy, he's, he's he's good. Yeah. I almost wish there was like a Darius versus Oliveira or Poirier versus Darius just so Darius could get his name back in that title fight. That's why I want he to. He just see. doesn't have the backing. And then, now say, for example, Islam wins. If Islam wins, I mean, hold up. Let me take that back. We already talked about him. I'm talking about yeah. Volkanovski, the Australian, New Zealand, over there, that guy. The number one pound for pound. Yeah, if he wins, man, this this is going to mess up so many different things. Because well, what title does he defend? Like, what does he do? Like, we already got an interim title fight on the same card, which we're going to talk about after mm-hmm. all this. But what does he do? Because check this out. In the featherweights, the the really good movement we got going right now. Finally. Okay, we got Yair against Josh Emmett for the interim belt. Then a few months later, we got Max Holloway against Arnold Allen. We know for yes. a fact Max Holloway is not going to fight for another title. But if Arnold Allen beats Holloway, that's a, that's a dangerous fight for both of these guys just in general whoever wins if max holloway wins he just stays at the the mini boss you gotta beat me to get to the title basically and if Mm -hmm. if arnold allen wins he beat mini boss and you of course he's gonna fight either volkanovsky if he doesn't defend against uh yair or josh emmett the winner of that or it's gonna be to crown an actual champion because I don't think they would do that. You think they would do that? If he vacates the title, they're going to promote? Yeah, they would. They would. They, they did would. It with Aldo. They've done it before. They did it with Aldo. They'll promote whoever wins the rodriguez Emmett fight to champion, and then Ardo and Allen would get the first crack at them. Yeah, they, they've done that multiple times. They did it with uh, Aldo. They did it with DC. Yeah. They did it with uh, Aldo's buddy back in the day. Um. Wow, I his name. 
Boral, yeah. The one that TJ stole the soul of. He stole his soul. Yes. But for the most part, with uh, Volkanovski winning the belt, it just... I mean, I can see him defending the title in both divisions, but can his body hold up to doing that? You know what I'm saying? I think he would be fine. If you could defend one of the... or both of those belts once a year... I think he That's would have two to fights do a year. two and one. You know what I'm two saying? Two and one? He would have to defend one at least once, and then the other two. Like You know what I mean? And then the following year, say if he yeah. was on a, a, a long reign, the following year he does two of the other weight class and then one of the other. You know what I'm saying? He's got but to do But at something. the same time, I don't think that I don't think that they would let him. Like I think they'll force him to drop one of the belts. Like, uh... They won't let him like Amanda. Yeah. The only reason why Amanda gets to hold two belts is because one division doesn't really exist. That's that's why she gets to hold two belts. But with featherweight and lightweight, those are two very packed divisions that have a lot of movement constantly going on. So they need to keep those moving. They can't they can't hold up the divisions like that. Remember when Connor tried to do that, you know. And he didn't even have both belts when he was holding it up, but he was holding it up trying to get both belts. Yeah, and it was a craziness. He never defended a belt. Yes, he's never defended a belt once. Besides uh, Amanda Nunes, has anybody truly defended a belt? DC at heavyweight, right? DC at heavyweight, but um, he didn't defend it while he was double champ at yeah, light heavyweight. Yeah, because he had. Right? He had to drop the light heavyweight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Volkanovski could do it. He could be the first guy to do it. Honestly. I think so, too. I think he could legitimately... Because he doesn't have a, a huge injury. Like, uh... Resume? Yeah. Like... Check this out. You know what would be amazing, though? Like, if they convinced Islam to cut weight to 145 somehow... Where both titles will be on the line. This is some WrestleMania shit. You know what I'm saying? But just imagine that, you know? Like, if he could do that. What you're telling me is what needs to happen is this just needs to be a catchweight battle. Hold on, man. Yeah, people are calling me while I'm recording. It's silly. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, this needs to be a catchweight battle at 150 and put both titles on the line. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might as well, because whoever wins is going to have to drop one or the other anyways. So it might as well be for both titles. Oh, Absolutely. Um, but the way I see it happening is if Volkanovski wins the lightweight title, he drops the featherweight title, they promote whoever wins that Yair fight to champ, and then the winner of Max versus Ar- Arnold gets a title shot of against that winner. But it's, it's kind of like, damn, man, you, you, you was the man, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you don't want to defend it no more. I mean, there Look, was no one else. There, there's really not many people that he needs. He has nothing left to prove in featherweight anymore. He's already beat the greatest featherweight twice. And the other one once. And the other one once. And another like, one before that. Or another one before that. Like, dude, he smoked everybody at featherweight. He smoked the legends and yep. the up and comers. Yep. There is nothing left for him to prove there. Like, yeah, there's a couple like fights that he could take. He could fight you know, Connor. Like, he could fight Connor. That's gonna be at 155, though. I don't think Connor's gonna make 155 no time soon because I believe he's fighting Chandler at a buck seventy. They're doing 170. I believe so. I believe so. I believe so. Mm. Couldn't come off the roids quick enough, huh? You know this guy, man. <laughs> you know this guy. He don't miss weight, though. I give him that. He's never missed weight. 
Never failed a drug test. And he's been sparring everyone. DJs, wives, random chicks. Old man at the bar. Old man at the bar. He's constantly staying in fight-ready shape. Yeah, he's he's fight-ready all the time. Smashing Mm -hmm. cell phones. You name it, man. He's there. He is there. Okay. So, Volkanovski will probably vacate the featherweight belt. You never know, though. He might, He might. depending on how much damage he takes, he might defend it one last time to unify the belt to where there's no, like, if ands, or buts about it. Just because I feel he's that type of dude. Like, go down and be like, all right, unify this belt, then drop it. Yeah, and be like, so to be like, there's nobody that's champion but me. And here you go. I'm going to leave it on the uh, the fireplace mantle. And call it a day. Y'all have at it. I'm going to go do my that, own thing. Do you think that either Yair or... Nope. Uh, <laughs> I, I, nope. Emmett nope. can really make that claim? Like nope. I think he can put that, that belt on the mantle right now and be like, I was the greatest that ever was. Yes. In featherweight. Yes. yes. Period. And yes. that's me being a hardcore Max fan, which wants me to say that he is the greatest. Uh, I'm in the same boat as you. But... um. <laughs> He is, he has earned my respect. He is that dude now. Yeah, and it, it's hard to argue. He smokes the ear easily. Josh Emmett, he might put him out. Yeah, I think he knocks knocks out Josh Emmett. Yeah, he's he's slick enough to. He'll probably just get wrestled. Honestly, if Max I think took Yair him down, gets mauled. Yeah, if Max took him down, right? Yeah. Yeah, Alex is probably sub him, but I I see him finishing both those dudes. Mm-hmm. What they should have did was had Arnold Allen fight somebody for the title. Yeah, that's kind of weird that they didn't do that. I feel like that's more interesting and title worthy fight is Holloway versus Arnold Allen. I know that they they're trying to avoid the whole Max Holloway versus Volkov or Volkanovski again, but. Dana White never said that he wouldn't give <laughs> Holloway another chance at it. it. It should be Arnold Allen against Yair, honestly. Fair. But whoever was, uh, well, they're both coming off wins in a way. But, yeah, that's, I mean, all three of them are actually coming off wins. So, either way, Brian Ortega is left without a dance partner. We'll, I mean, pro- but we'll probably get a part two of Max Holloway and Ortega. Honestly, I can see that happening. Oh, does does Ortega want that happening? I mean, he's single now. He's probably <laughs> back in the gym focusing. You can't be well, focusing I mean, when, when you got uh, Tracy Cortez training with you and shit, you know what I mean? I mean, wasn't, wasn't he like that when he made his comeback? Or weren't they already together? Possibly, but he wasn't training for Max. Yeah, that's fair. <clears throat> but for the most part, the Yair and Josh Emmett fight is just going to be a placeholder for uh, the next contender. Really, it's like honestly, there's no reason to to have an interim belt on the line for it. But you know, the UFC does things. And it gives a clear contender, number one contender for the the next fight at featherweight, if Volk loses, and if he wins, literally, it's just, it's just like saving them the whole vacancy thing. Right. Basically. Well, it also opens up another scenario though, because if Volk wins. Do you think it's possible that they give Islam a run back? No. No? You no. don't think so? I, I don't see him getting a run back. Just because, like, he's not, uh, it can't happen, though. Look at Cody Garbrandt. Yeah, he doesn't have those credentials, but. Look at Cody Garbrandt. Who else got, like, instant run backs after uh, winning the title and losing it right away? 
after w- just just winning the title and losing it first defense, not many. Yeah. Uh, shit, Stipe didn't even get that shit. Stipe defended though. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He didn't even get that shit after defending. Uh, but either way, it's just this fight is mainly just like the uh, guarantee that we have some movement in the featherweight division, which has been kind of stagnant if you think about it, because the whole Max and uh, Alexander tie up with that. Because I mean, Max yeah. is just he's just knocking people off. Like, oh, you want to fight for the title? No, player. Here I go. And oh no, he'd be like, hey, it's the kind. You know what I'm saying? He'll, he'll say some uh, Hawaiian shit and then toss them aside. And then they're not getting a title shot because they can't beat Max. Like I said, mini boss. We got to see how Max looks in this fight anyways. I because this will be this will be uh, married Max's first fight. Uh, I know, I know. First I'm going to hold my uh, thoughts to that pod because I have a lot to say. That boy is good at Apex, though. I give him that. I want to run some games with him. Maybe one day I'll be able to run some with him. We'll catch some dubs. Well, uh, I figure. Oh, we still gotta talk about the the upcoming fights for Jorge's promotion, George's Boxing League. That's what I'm gonna call it, George's Boxing League. I mean, game bread fight. Or game bread boxing ain't ain't bad. We we don't really gotta like talk too much about it. It's just the fact that the matter that is happening, which is incredible. Roy Jones Jr. against Anthony Pettis, bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean they're both out there prime, but man, Pettis is a young man still. Roy Jones is kind of old. I find that as a as a good matchup, like. Anthony Pettis is out of his prime. Roy Jones is out of his prime. But Anthony Pettis was never exactly a boxer. boxer. Right? He's a so, dynamic striker. Yeah. And that, there's a huge difference. <laughs> the The fight that's going to uh, probably steal the show is, I think, Aldo against Jeremy Stevens part two. Yeah. Yeah, part two. Yeah, part two. Because Vitor against uh, Jacare makes little sense. No sense. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the one that I was like, yeah, you got two big names in yeah. the MMA community to fight each other, but no. why is Jacare boxing? Exactly. Like, shouldn't he be, like, grappling mm-hmm. tournaments and shit? All right, but on that note, Mark, it's that time. Zip it up. And zip it up. Peace out, guys. Later.